What is up everyone? It's Joe from Get Good Drums and I'm here today to talk about flams. No, not flans, not the thing you eat, flams, drum flams specifically. Uh, what on earth is a flam? Well, uh, it's this. It's two hits put together uh, in very close proximity uh, to sort of sound huge, I guess. How would, you, how would one define a flam? Uh, but that's what it is. You can see it here. Um, the reason I wanted to cover this is because, as you probably know, we just released the One Kit Wonder Architects library. And um, a couple of people have been asking why we didn't include a flam articulation on the snare like we do with our full-fledged libraries like the P4 or Invasion, Modern Massive or the original Halpern pack. Um, and firstly, I wanted to tell you why we don't. And then I'll show you how easy it is to reproduce your own without the need of that articulation. So the reason we don't uh, put them in our One Kit Wonder libraries is because these libraries are intended to be load up quick, uh, to be affordable, and just to be sort of click and go. Um, and for that reason, there are sort of areas in which we shrunk uh, the library from our normal fully fledged libraries um and one of those little sacrifices we made was not including a snare articulation now people say that having a snare articulation is a real time saver um and it can be but honestly like it takes two seconds to program uh, a flam and even with our libraries with uh, flam articulations i rarely use them because flams kind of need to be adapted for the tempo of your song. The reason that's the case is because if you've got a really slow tempo song, you're gonna want the two hits of your flam probably spaced apart a bit more. And if you've got a high tempo song, they're gonna be more condensed. And I'll, I'll show you that in this. So uh, I programmed out this little beat to show you what a flam sounds like in context. So the flams in this beat are these two on the snare and then that one on the floor toms. People kind of have different views on where you should place a flam and what you should do with the velocities. If your song is quick enough, I like to put the first of the two hits on the beat um, at a slightly lower velocity. Uh, I've seen videos online of people showing how to program flams and they could put the second one on the beat, so like this. And I'll show you that. And um, it's just got a slightly more pushed feel. I find putting the first hit on the beat kind of leads to a bit more of a groovy in the pocket feel, which I personally really like. If you're gonna program a flam on one drum, so not split between two different uh, kit pieces. You're gonna wanna look at the velocities. As you can see here on my snare flams, I've programmed the first hit slightly lower. So the first one is riding around 100, and the second one is like a velocity layer up at 115 or a couple. Um, the reason is you want to try and avoid that machine gun sound. If I program these both the same velocities, it won't sound bad, but it's not going to sound quite as realistic. To be honest, we've got the round robins on this dialed in pretty good, so it does sound uh, more than passable. But I find having the one before slightly lower actually kind of adds to the impact of the flam a bit, because it kind of creates this big sound. It almost sounds like one drum hit, like you're just hitting it once, but it sounds bigger. Whereas if you kind of do them both the same velocity, to my ear, it sounds more like two different hits. Now, I find if you're splitting the flam across different kit pieces, the velocities are more forgiving. As you can see, I've got this one set up between the two floor toms. Uh, and they're both the exact same velocity. But I find if they're split between kit pieces, it doesn't sound as unnatural. You can, of course, go in and edit them if you want it to be sort of more human. 
Now, uh, let me slow this song down and you'll see why we need to take into consideration how far these hits are apart. So let's, I don't know, let's try going down to like 70. It's probably going to be a bit boring to listen to at this speed, but it's a good speed to show you what I'm talking about. So you can hear, especially on the snare, you can really hear the distance between those two hits now. And that is a cool sound, like it's really dragging. Um, but if we want them to be slightly more flam-like, slightly tighter, let's just pull those in. I actually don't mind how it sounds on the floor tom. But for the sake of this video, let's alter that also. Right, so let's A, B that difference. So you can really hear the difference there. And as I was saying earlier, if you had a flam articulation, those don't change the distance between the hits depending on your tempo. The articulation is as the articulation was recorded, right? So doing it this way, and then this is why I always personally do it this way, even with the articulation in the library, you have more control and you can make it sound more realistic and more suitable for the song. So let's just push this up to 160. Now these are gonna sound way too close together. Right? I mean, at this tempo, you're going to want to start adding in more velocity variations so it sounds more realistic. Maybe a bit too low. So I'm going to want to space these out. Let's try there. You see? So faster speeds, you're going to want to space them out a bit more to make them sound more natural and to take up that sort of sonic space that you intend a flam to do. So that's a lot of talking about flams. Uh, I hope it was clear and easy to follow. And I hope you can now see that even without the articulation in the library, it takes two seconds to program them in. Like let's put two flams in this last uh, beat here just to show you how quick it is. Done. See, super quick, super easy, and you can alter it and change it to suit the tempo of your song even better. So I hope that was easy, informative, and useful, and I hope you enjoy programming your flams. All right, I'll see you next time.